Good day viewers, you are welcome to Soluble Tutors. Today we will be discussing about activation energy and catalyst. Activation energy and uh, catalyst. Now, what is activation energy? Activation energy is the minimum amount of energy. Minimum amount of energy. This minimum amount of energy underlined. The minimum amount of energy required for a chemical reaction to occur. It means before a chemical reaction can occur, uh, there is an energy needed to make it happen, for it to occur. Now, for every chemical reaction, you always have uh, reactants. Those are the things that are coming together, reacting together to form a product. Two things might come together. For example, you might have A reacting with B. To give you C plus D. These are the reactants. And these are the products. Another example is when hydrogen gas combines with oxygen gas to give us the oxygen gas is double, to give us water is a liquid now. So to balance it, this is two, so you have to put two here. Yes, so hydrogen reacting with oxygen gives water. So this hydrogen and oxygen are the reactants to give us uh, water and water is a product. So let's now move back. So it means when a reactant is passing through a phase and going to product phase, there is a barrier. Because the energy it needed to climb is called activation energy. But why climbing it? Because from here to this place. This is called activation energy. Activation energy. So the name of what is climbing is like a mountain. See, it is like a barrier in the way that reactant needs to climb over in order to reach the products on the other side. Now, it's climbing this to reach this product. What is climbing is called activation energy because that's the energy needed to climb. And as big as it is here, this thing is called a barrier that it needs. Sometimes we also call it energy barrier. That's what it needs to climb, call it energy barrier. On top here, very tip, is what we call activation complex. Activation complex because that's the highest that's the highest mountain you need to climb before you go to pro dot that's activation complex now moving ahead apart from activation complex there is a way in which we can limit this because when the reactant and the reacting body has to climb this mountain it takes a lot of time it's uh, it makes the reaction to be very slow before they climb this place very very slow how do we not make it very fast? We have to introduce something we call catalyst. Catalyst. We have to introduce a catalyst. We have to introduce a catalyst. Now, what do you understand by the word catalyst? Catalysts are substance. They are substances that can lower the activation. energy of a reaction okay making it faster making it happen faster it makes it happen faster this word faster is very very important it makes it happen very fast now what does it do to this activation energy it reduces this mountain to climb, which is the barrier. It reduces it. So the part, the new pathway will come this way, comes like this, comes like this. So assuming a car has to climb this mountain, another car has to climb this. This one gets here faster than the one that goes up. So that's what catalyst does in every aspect of life. It lowers the time to reach your destination. It lowers the time for the reactant to reach the products. 
lowers it to reach the products. There is another term we use in terms of this artificial energy. Now, the stage between here, between the reactants, when the reactant started climbing this barrier, to this stage is called the transition state. Between here to this place is called the transition state. That is the state whereby the reactant converts to products. That state of conversion is called the transition state. For the transition. Now, let's quickly also discuss about rate of chemical reaction. Under this, we say the rate of chemical reaction is the number of moles of reactant converted, converted. As this reactant will be converted, number of moles of re, uh, reactants converted, or products formed per unit time. Is that the reactant converted or product what formed per unit time? Thus, it is the speed at which reactants are used up. So reactants will be used up the speed and product formed per unit time. Now, look at the formula. Rate of reaction. We have mass of substance over time taken. The mass of that substance. Rate of reaction can also be concentration of reactant or product over time taken. Rate of reaction can also be equal to volume of substance over time taken. Now, rate curve. That's the next thing. A graph which shows the rate of reaction. That's the graph. It's known as the rate curve because it will always give curve. The curve describes the reaction process from start to finish. Let's look at an example of the curve. In this area, okay, this incre increases loss of mass as the mass is losing. That's going up. Now, the time, as the time increases, is coming like this. So as it's going, it means as the time increases, the loss of mass is started losing mass. That's reactant. As it's reacting, it started losing mass. So you get a time, it will stop losing mass and it goes straight like that. It means it has completed. That's just the meaning. Look at its end point of reaction. Once it has completed, it means that uh, it will not lose further mass because it has lost all the mass. So we call it the rate curve for chemical reaction. Let's look under this. We have the collision theory. What does collision theory say? It says there must be collision between two substances. They must collide. It is when they collide that reaction can occur. Collision theory states that for a chemical reaction to occur, okay, for a chemical reaction to occur, the reactant particle the reactant particles must collide with each other. They will have to collide before they start reaction. Okay? Although there are many of such collisions, only a few collisions result in the chemical reaction or product formation. So we call we call some effective collision. Those are the collision that there are some collision that will occur that will not even lead to what the reactant turning to product. Okay? So for a chemical reaction to occur, the colliding reactant must possess a certain amount of energy. The energy that they possess for collision to occur is called, called activation energy. It's called activation energy. So the activation energy is the minimum amount of energy possessed by the colliding reactant particle okay, for a chemical reaction to what? To occur. Okay, so it is equivalent to the energy barrier. I think I've mentioned that just now. In the beginning of this video, I've mentioned that. You can see the diagram. This up is the activated complex. I've said that before. Activation energy is between the level of the reactant to the activation death complex and the difference between reactant and product is this now we have endothermic and exothermic reaction exothermic reaction okay this is a chemical reaction in which it is given off to the surrounding that is there is loss of heat in the reaction look at what is happening the heat of reactant is from here to here the heat of product is from here to around here you see that the heat of product is smaller than the heat of reactant it means when reacting something is reacting it means getting to the product it has lost it has lost the energy. Okay. Now coming here, this is endothermic reaction. It means it is absorbed into the system. Endothermic reaction is a reaction in which it is absorbed from the what from the surroundings. So it means the heat of the reactant it will be smaller, the heat of the product will be bigger. So the difference between them is what we call the enthalpy change, delta H. Okay. So what makes reaction take place? The reactant must collide together. That's the number one thing. Number two, the reactant must have the right energy. That is, they must possess minimum energy needed, which is called activation energy. So they must collide or they must act activation energy. Those are the two things that determines that. So what can prevent reaction from taking place? 
the reaction will not take place. One, if the particle do not collide, I think we have said that. Two, if the energy is less than the activation energy, or if there is a steric hindrance, there's something we call steric hindrance. So that's that about that. Let's steric hindrance is the stopping of chemical reaction, which might be caused by molecule mole, molecule structure. Okay, so coming here now, factors affecting rate of chemical reaction. What are those factors? Number one. Nature of the reactant. How does the reactant look like? It can affect. Number two, concentration and pressure for gases of reactants. That's another thing over there. Temperature of the reactant. Surface area of the reactant. Presence of light. Presence of catalyst. How does it affect? Now, effect of nature of reactant. The nature of reactant deals with the chemical strength or energy content of reactant. That's one thing on there. Okay? So it depends on the nature. Just like beans. Beans cook. Rice cook faster, but beans cook uh, using a longer time. That's the nature. Now, this one, effect of concentration or pressure of reactant. The concentration can also affect, okay? An increase in the concentration of the reactant will result to an increase in the effective collision of the reactant. And likewise, the rate of reaction, okay? Why a decrease we are first. So, we must know the effect of increase of what? Of concentration. It will increase the effective collision, which now facilitates the rate of reaction. Pressure is for gases. Pressure affects the concentration of a gas reactant, okay? So if you increase pressure, so you are increasing the, what, the rate of chemical reaction. That's that. So let's go to effect, effect of temperature. The rate of reaction increases with increase in temperature. You can see that if you want your thing to get done faster, you have to increase the temperature. And decrease with, tem with the temperature when the temperature is lowered. You can see another thing. That's about uh, temperature. Now let's go to effect of surface area. When you grind something, it dissolves faster and it cooks faster. So when you are grinding a solid, you are increasing the surface area. So the surface area of the reactant particle is a measure of the area of contact of the reactant. Okay? The surface area of a solid is increased by breaking into smaller particles. That is powdered from. I've said that. So when you increase the surface area, you are increasing the rate of chemical reaction. That's just it. So let's go to effect of light. Light can help us to facilitate rate of chemical reaction also. Because light can help in photosynthesis and other things like that. Okay, effect of catalyst. There are two types of catalysts, as I've mentioned earlier in the beginning of this video. A catalyst is a substance which alters. It means it either it either make the rate of reaction to be faster or slower. The one that makes it to be faster, we call them promoters. The one that makes it slower, we call them the inhibitors. Okay, so the rate of chemical reaction without undergoing any chemical change. Now, at the end of the day, the catalyst will not change. It will just do its job. It will still remain at the at the end of the reaction. So that's that about that. So this diagram I've given it out before. Exothermic reaction, endothermic. Let's now talk about the catalyst now. Characteristics of catalyst. A catalyst alters the rate of a chemical reaction. That's the number one characteristic. It's also part of the definition. A catalyst remains chemically unchanged at the end of the reaction. Okay? They don't change. A catalyst is specific in action. Yes. If it wants to increase the, the rate of reaction, it will increase. If it wants to reduce, it reduces. And some of and some catalysts that are used for some equi some uh, reactions. Okay? A catalyst does not affect the equilibrium position of a reversible reaction. That's another thing over there. It doesn't affect it. A catalyst does not affect the type of product formed in the reaction. It doesn't change the type of product. It just makes the rate of reaction faster. A catalyst cannot start a reaction. No, but only effect, but only effective in the course of the reaction. That's it. It can start a reaction. Let's look at some catalysts here. They are specific in the reaction. When you have a reaction here, determine the composition of potassium trisochlorate 5, that is KClO3. Looking at the KClO3 is being decomposed to give us KCl and O2. There's a particular catalyst for this, which is manganese 4 oxide. You should note that, please. MnO2. Now, this one is for sulfur 4 oxide. Okay? Now, when you are producing sulfur, okay, sulfur 4 oxide, have to react with oxygen to produce sulfur what? 6 oxide. That's it. So we are using vanadium for that, vanadium 5 oxide, V2O5. Formation of nitrogen 2 oxide from ammonia. That one we use platinum. Synthesis of ammonia, that's what we call labor process. We use iron, finally divided iron. Formation of margarine from vegetable oil. We use finally divided nickel. Okay. So this is a comment on four factors that change the rate of reaction. I've mentioned that before. Temperature, concentration, surface area, and the catalyst. So please, if you are new to this uh, channel, Okay, you can join our WhatsApp group. I will leave the link to the WhatsApp group below because there is a, there are questions and answers 
which I will submit the PDF to my student in the WhatsApp group. So you can kindly join the WhatsApp group, checking the link below. Thank you. See you in another video. God bless you.